I'm Jay Hickey, President of the American Horse Council. Jay, how would you describe uh, the necessity for this program? Well, the Horse Protection Act was passed in 1970, amended in 1971. That's 43 years ago. And we still have the problem of soaring in certain segments of the horse industry. Tennessee walking horses, racking horses, spotted saddle horses. So I think it's a time, a time to pass this legislation and finally end this practice. The, the problem of soaring is starting to spill over into other segments of the horse industry, like saddlebreds, Morgan's hackneys. Even though they don't soar their horses, it would be counterproductive. But the public sees the animated gait and they thinks they're, think they're walking horses. And, and that's one reason. The other is that welfare is very high on the list of concerns in the horse industry. And therefore, most uh, large organizations and small organizations are attuned to this issue. So I think it's time, and, and the fact that we have 19, 20 major national horse organizations supporting it indicates that. Did you ever think you'd see a demonstration like this? Well, no, for, for various reasons. The main problem being just getting the permits. I, you have to commend these people. They had to get five permits, new problems every day. Uh, the last time I saw a horse on the hill like this, I think it was 1978 when the American Horse Council was working on the Nez Pierce War Trail. And since then, it hasn't been. So we have to commend everybody for uh, putting this together and bringing the horses up. Have you ever seen a sword horse? I've seen a, a number of sword horses, yes. And I don't, don't want to see them anymore, and that's why we're supporting the legislation. What is the condition of those horses' ankles? Well, it's just, it, they look awful, and, and they, they look terrible, but it's more how they look is not important. It's how they feel to the horse. Uh, you see a horse that's soared and they have trouble moving. They have so much weight in their back. To be perfectly honest, uh, I'm not even sure the big look is that appealing anymore to the, uh, to the public. It may be to people in that sector of the industry, but I think the public is turned off by it. The people that oppose this bill, some of them tell me and, and other reporters that it's going to destroy the business of the walking horse. Can, is this something, this kind of horse you're seeing today, the sound horse, is that, is there a business in this? Oh, uh, there, it, Tennessee walking horses are the, one of the nicest breeds. But if they weren't nice horses, it would be so hard to soar them. So that's one indication. But it, it's, it's, this is the way, I think, to save the walking horse industry. Most walking horses just are not soared. And they're being shown right now, but it's the spill off of the antipathy, the taint of the soaring part of it, which is a very small percent of perform performance and, and uh, uh, padded horses that's, that's hurting the industry. I think if they stop that, it, there's a great deal of uh, room for growth in the walking horse industry. Some of the Tennessee and Deep South uh, legislators have come up with another bill, uh, primarily introduced by Representative Marsha Blackburn of Tennessee. Uh, why did you decide to support PAST and not the other bill? Well, first of all, the PAST Act does what we want it to do. It's narrowly drafted, it's appropriate for the problem, it doesn't affect 90% 90, 90 of the horse industry. The, uh, the Blackburn bill does not satisfy the concerns raised by the Department of Agriculture, by people who are opposed to soaring. It, uh, it allows action devices, chains, pads to continue to be worn. Uh, it it uh, allows the DQP system to be remain in the hands of the industry that it's being regulated, you know, the fox in the hen house type of a thing. It doesn't do what, what is necessary to stop this practice. The PAST Act does. That's why we support that one. Um, I'm Dr. Whitney Miller, and I am Assistant Director at the AVMA's Governmental Relations Division and I'm responsible for lobbying on behalf of the association to Congress and regulatory agencies on animal welfare issues. How would you describe the AMA position regarding the PAST Act and the necessity for it? The AVMA is, is one of the bill's strongest supporters. We really want this bill enacted and we have every state veterinary medical association on board as well supporting this bill. Well, um, as veterinarians, do you think there's a uh, any majority understanding about this stack pads and heavy shoes and chains? Do you think there's an understanding among your members that this is going on? You know, we've done a lot of education and outreach with our members over the past few years about soaring and the pads and the chains. 
AVMA and the American Association of Equine Practitioners came out with a statement in 2012 opposing the use of the stacked pads and chains in the walking horses. Do you view that as part of the soaring phenomenon? Absolutely. While the chains and the pads in and of themselves are not causing the soaring, they are a means and an incentive to soar the horses because there's no reason to put a chain on the lower leg if you haven't soared it with the chemical and those pad stacked pads are just a way to hide the bolts and other ways of physical soaring that they're doing to the horses. Do you think it's possible that a horse can still be sore and pass a traditional inspection if thermography and chemical swabbing aren't used? Unfortunately, yes, because the folks that are doing the soaring have become very good at hiding what they're doing. So they've done different things to pass the inspection so that the horses can get through and still show. They use, like you said, foreign substances that may numb the legs or other ways to hide the, the ways that they are soaring. What is this thing about? Is it schooling or what do they do where they train the horses not to flinch? It's called stewarding and what they're doing is they're training the horse that if they flinch or show any signs of pain during the inspection that they're going to have negative ramifications. So they teach the horse that if they flinch, bad things are going to happen. So the horses know not to flinch during the, during the exam. Well, the industry is very critical about digital palpitation as a way of detecting soaring. Uh, they, they call it mashing the horse's foot until they flinch. Do you think that uh, digital palpitation can be a useful technique? And, or would it be better eliminated and we went completely to technical procedures like thermography and digital x-rays? Well, as a veterinarian, you know, part of our assessment of any animal is the physical digital palpation, just like your doctor would examine you if you went to the doctor. So we still feel it is an important, very important tool for detecting the soaring. Are you surprised about the large support today for the passage of the uh, passage? Absolutely not. As you've heard, we have a majority of both members in the House and the Senate that support this bill. We have hundreds of organizations and individuals that have come on and endorsed the legislation, and this is just a yet another showing of how much support there is for this legislation and how many people want it enacted. Now, several congressmen in the core of the Big Lake uh, area have introduced another piece of legislation, sort of a counter bill. Right. Uh, could, you, could you support that, or if not, why not? The AVMA is opposed to the alternative legislation, and there's many reasons that we are opposed, but the main reason is it does not fix the inherent problem in the current enforcement system, which is that the industry is allowed to self-police. That's the system that needs to change, and the alternative bill only bolsters that instead of stopping it. Is there anything else you want to add? Just to say that the AVMA has been opposed to soaring for decades, ever since even before the Horse Protection Act came into being, and we want to support the PAST Act so that we finally see this abusive practice end.